Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I'd like to share a few messages from uh, Dawn's newsletter. And before you turn me off, I'd like to explain something. Now, I know the Bible talks about testing the spirits. But I knew, and some of you I'm sure know and will know the names. I'm not given the names because they're not on anymore, I don't think, unless they're under a different name. There were two very young men who were receiving words from the Lord, like daily or more often than even daily, like three or four a day. And they were saying that the, the message would be, this is your Lord and Savior speaking. I am, um, in other words, what they were saying was meeting the criteria for testing the spirits as to who they were. Yet it turned out that they were false prophets. Because Satan and his demons, they're smart and they know the word of God. And they know that scripture that people tend to go by. And if it doesn't have that, they don't just kick it aside. Well, I... I know that not everybody needs to hear that. And what you need to do is use your discernment. Does the message you're getting fit with something God would tell? Does it fit with what's going on? If it's saying something that's like going on now. And, and does it line up with scripture? And what does the rest of the body of Christ think? See, there you go again. You got the rhema word, you got the word of God, and you got the body of Christ. So please don't discard these messages just because they don't say, this is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ speaking, or it's signed underneath Yahushua HaMashiach, or something that you think the demon wouldn't say. Let's judge them by what they say, the words. What's it telling us? What is it telling us to do or not do? All right, with that, I'm going to get started on this one that I've been holding since May the 14th. Today is Monday, May the 17th. In fact, I've got three of them. Uh, it's uh, the 17th. It's 4.35 p.m. This is Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Walk strong. You are my offspring, and you have been given everything you need to walk in the Spirit with the strength and assurance of my presence. I am not a million miles away. I am as close as your breath. Now, before I read this, I had been singing some songs and praying and, and thought, well, I better get started, you know, checking my email and stuff. I think this was last night. Anyway, when I read, I am as close as your breath, you could have blowed me over with a feather or a whatever that doesn't make sense but knocked me over with a feather I guess would make more sense I, I mean it just it just it's like it hit my spirit that God is so close you know why because his Holy Spirit lives in us and the more the closer you get to the Lord the more Holy Spirit you get you want to be filled, whatever filled is. I don't know what, you know, is it in your belly? Is it in your, your pineal gland is not very large, but that is how the Lord speaks to you. And that is where your VMAP2 gene is that certain folks would like to see destroyed. And I hope I can say that, but if we keep, our uh, ability to hear from the Lord clean and open 
um, and keep asking for more of the Holy Spirit. Ask for um, to be able to pray in the Spirit because that's where it comes through. Okay? So you certainly don't want to do anything that would destroy it. Do I make my point? I believe all of you, I'm preaching to the choir. But I have a few new people. And I'm sorry I have to talk in code. But that's the way it's come. And really I didn't say anything that they should care about. But, you know, it's like I'm not sure what, what can we say, what shouldn't we say, what what would they mind? You know, I know one word you can't talk about, but uh, anyway, the thing of it is, the Lord is as close as your breath. Your breath. Where is your breath? It starts from in here. Not, I mean, yeah, it comes out your mouth. And it's like here. <laughs> But it starts in here. That's where your Holy Spirit is. Think about it. The Almighty God and Jesus Christ and their Holy Spirit as the Elohim, the plurality of God, creators of heaven and earth, lives in you through the Holy Spirit. When you dwell on that, man, it blows your mind. He's in you. He's in you. So anyway, here's the scripture that that Marsha put with this. Or maybe she was given this. She doesn't ever, they don't ever say, the Lord gave me this. They just put a scripture with it. Maybe the Lord leads them to it. You know how that is. Those of you who get words and visions and dreams... The Lord will lead you to scriptures that confirm what you got. All right. Acts 17, 26 through 28. And it doesn't say what version, but you can look it up in your own if this doesn't sound right to you. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Listen, listen to that. I'm going to read it again. I want you to really pay attention. This is more pertinent for today than ever. So try to get it. And he, capital H, probably NASB, has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. That's what started out to be, okay? It started out to be that way. And he and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Pre-appointed times. He has determined their pre-appointed times. That does that sounds to me like God in his infinite wisdom allowed each person to be born into the century and decade that they were born into, through which parents. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. You tell me what you're seeing. And by and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him 
and find him. Though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. It's too bad, and this is me speaking, so many of his offspring have sold their birthright for the ability to oh, fly in a plane, get into a sports arena, go to the theater, go buy stuff at a certain store that says this and that only. And they're tired of it. They're tired of the restrictions, so they sell their birthright. And they're no longer his offspring. Do you see what I'm saying about this being so more for today than ever? Think about it. Praise be to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for those of us he warned ahead of time. I thank him that I, I somehow qualified, if I could put it that way, to have the sense to research and know the truth. And to love him more and more as I grew into life by learning by my mistakes and learning how this mistake got me into this mess and this mistake got me into that mess. And it's like, what is wrong with me? Why did I do those things when I love you so much? You know, talking to the Lord in prayer and I'm like, Finally, it's like a light bulb went off in my head. And I, I hope that you all can say that too. And those of you who haven't yet, try to pray until that light bulb goes off. That you fully understand why you should love Jesus more than any person, even your children, you see, even your children. Okay, the next one was dated May 14. It is so important that you keep a positive, belief-filled attitude. It helps you and others around you. It is the loving thing to do for both yourself and others. Now I am certain that the Lord, I'm this is me talking, knows what's going on in our lives. And yet he is suggesting to us that we keep a positive belief-filled attitude. I have actually prayed Lord, if they're mean to me, is it okay if I'm mean to them? <laughs> Seriously. I'm being up front with you, man. But I felt like he was saying, why? <laughs> like, that's all I got. Why would I want to be mean to them? What good would it do? And this comes up. It is so important that you keep a positive, belief-filled attitude. It helps you and others around you. It is the loving thing to do for both yourself and others. I know you do not understand all that is happening. Boy, howdy, I don't. You will not understand it all this side of heaven. Yield to me. I will not put on you more than you can bear. 
even though at times it doesn't feel that way, trust me. The scripture given with this is Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 in the New King James Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And that was given to Bev Robinson. All right, the last one is May for, dated May 14. I see those who are still living fearfully. You have become fearful of the future or of things that might happen. I tell you today, this way is not fit for a believer. I want you to be full of belief and excited about what is to come. Even now, while society is darkening and prophetic events are unfolding, you should be expecting good outcomes because you are my child. Cling to my promises and believe the best. I have to tell you, that's what gets me through stuff, is saying, Lord, I know your promises are true. I know you're coming for us. I know you're taking care of me because your Bible says so. Your word says so. And then I'll quote some scriptures will come to my mind and I'll quote them. And that's what we have to do. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18, uh, NRSV. Whatever that is. And our new revised standard version, maybe. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. And that was given to Robin Robinson Bolin. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every single one of us. And all of our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. God bless each and every one of you. I sure do hope we get to meet soon. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.